Next, we're going to hear from our third speaker of the evening, Bartholomew Campbell, Campbell or BART. BART is a motivational speaker, advanced level rap facilitator, management consultant, wellness educator, and life coach with over 30 years of leadership experience in operations management and consulting. Bart studied human resources management and management and community studies at Ryerson University. He holds a master of education degree focused on adult learning from Yorkville University and certificates in peer support, coaching and mentoring, leadership and others. Bart is an active volunteer at Faith Sanctuary Pentecostal Church, Mood Disorders Association of Ontario, Consumer Survivor Information Center Toronto, and many more organizations. Currently, Bart is semi-retired from corporate life and is passionate about making a positive impact on mental health and wellness. By being open about his journey with mental health, Bart hopes to inspire those suffering in silence so they can break free from self-stigma, recover, and find total wellness. Bart, I'll hand things over to you now. Thanks for being with us tonight. Wow. Thank you so much, Madeline, for that wonderful introduction. I was pinching myself a couple of times because it just sounds too good to be true, considering it's my life my fellow panelists, and those that are watching on this webinar, wherever you are this evening or this afternoon or morning, I want to say a pleasant day to you. And I want to thank you ahead of time for choosing to share this space with us, and especially myself. I apologize if I tend to be moving around a little bit. I speak with my whole body, my eyes, my face, etc. Um, and I enjoy doing it. So um, I apologize if I seem overly energetic. If you were in front of me right now, I would have asked you to raise your hands if you've ever experienced a mood swing or you know what it feels like to be in a bad mood. <laughs> Most times when I do that, I get about 90% of the room raising their hands saying, yes, I know what it feels like being in a bad mood. So I'm gonna use my statistics and assume that you all felt, yeah, I've been in a bad mood. And as such, you can relate to the topic that I'm gonna be sharing with you this evening uh, along with my peers. So I wanna to talk to you about balancing your mood. Why? Because being diagnosed with a mental illness does not have to feel like a death sentence because you can live well and function well regardless of the challenges you have and go on to live a fantastic life. For the past seven years, I've been living successfully with major depression, severe anxiety. I get panic attacks. I also hear voices, uh, five to be exact, four negative and one positive. And unfortunately, I've been able to identify that that one positive one is my grandmother, which is so nice. And so I'd like for you to leave today feeling hopeful and seeing all things being possible. And I really wanna thank Hope and Me, AKA MDAO, for the opportunity to speak because I grew up with this organization. This is where I had my first experience with wellness and recovery plans and registered group and support groups more than 10 years ago. So with that said, I'd like to really summarize how you can balance your mood by sharing three steps that related to me or resonated with me or work for me. And by the way, recent studies show that one in five uh, persons are affected by a mood disorder. So really and truly, whether or not you're directly affected by mental illness or not, we can all benefit by learning how to balance our mood. And so please stay with me as I go on this journey I'm gonna share a bit of my story before I share those three steps. So just before my 10th birthday, I felt like I had lived enough in this life and suffered enough and I really just wanted to die. It wasn't that at the time I was battling major depression and severe anxiety by itself, but I was also experiencing 
mental, emotional, and physical abuse. It didn't help that it was just two years before that that I was reunited with uh, my biological mother and her family. But uh, for me, it was the first time meeting her and the transitioning, leaving my grandmother, who I had known as my mother, for the first eight years of my life was equally traumatizing and made me even more wanting to die. However, I hung in there for my grandmother's sake because she was such a positive lady. She says, you are going to Kingston, Jamaica, because the skills and abilities that you have need to be developed, and it won't happen here on the farm. And so I hung in there for her sake. And to be honest, my grandmother was right. Over the years that followed, I developed amazing leadership and pupil management skills and really strong business acumen and became rather successful. However, up until uh, my 40th birthday, I continued though to feel like I'm being abused and taken advantage of at work, at home. Um, and the reality is I was just being all things to all people, not practicing self-care and very quiet about the mental health struggles that I was having. I dared not say anything about that because I actually looked good and I talked well, and I was getting well a lot of good paying uh, opportunities because I presented so well. I went on to actually uh, function as a management professional in corporate Canada, as you hear a bit of it in my bio that uh, Madeline shared, uh, very successfully. But sadly, the professional accomplishments did not help my situation and did not continue to keep me well. And so in about 2009, after trying my best, I experienced the worst meltdown in my life and had to be hospitalized. Out of that, that's where I received those diagnosis, diagnosis major depression, severe anxiety, panic attacks uh, often, and also started hearing voices. And I ended up having to take early retirement as a result of that from my management career. But I have no regrets because I found my voice and fell in love with my true authentic self. And that's where the recovery process started. So let me share three steps with you then, uh, in addition to that story as to how I uh, recovered. My first step to recovery was actually accepting treatment. It took almost 40 years for me to say, yes, something's wrong with me and speaking out loud. Uh, fortunately for me now, I was in the hospital, so I really had no choice. And so for the first time I was able to take medication and medication stabilized me at a time when I was spiraling out of control. In addition to the medication, I also benefited from what I now know years later uh, from peer support. There were actual people there who had experienced mental health challenges and they were telling me what they've done to overcome. So choosing to use some of the resources that they presented me with, as well as continuing on my medication, I was able to finally stabilize and actually learn to stop becoming a victim of myself and accept what was going on with me and decide to come up with some plans. So here where the planning part comes in. Step two, I learned how to create wellness plans. Yes. Now this was not foreign because I created success plans in the organizations that I work with, corporate strategic planning, but now the product was me. I internalized it and did what I needed to do to take care of myself. I must have thought during a period of time when I was going through my struggles over a hundred different ways to possibly help myself. But when I started taking care of myself and doing this planning, suddenly I started finding that I was enjoying life a whole lot more and looking forward to the next thing that was on my list of things to do. So this was a really awesome thing to do. The next thing I did very well was I continued to remain positive in terms of praying and meditating. This worked really well for me. And that built my faith and I actually came up with mantras. I started telling myself 
uh, my life is what I desire to become. And so adding that to the, the, the wellness plans created actions. And these actions resulted in step three. Step three, now I realize I need to take responsibility for my own life, my own feelings, my own actions. No more blaming my past, blaming my family members who were there for me, not there for me. And I was able to do so, uh, especially when I participated in the RAP, Wellness Recovery Action Planning. This is one of the programs that Hope and Me facilitated and I participated in, which now I'm a facilitator of. But what that did was give me a framework to manage the ebbs and flow of my challenges with mental illness. It worked so well that at some point a few years ago, I was able to stop taking medication, which was one of my goals. One of the other things that I did to take responsibility for myself is also believing and accepting the fact that because my mental health challenges is genetic, it's not just going to go magically go away. So the, the wellness plans are not for today and tomorrow, it's forever. And I still, although I said stop taking medication, I have it in my plan should in case something happens and I'm in crisis that I go back to that. So accepting the treatment, creating a wellness plan, taking personal responsibility for my life has helped me to recover and stay in recovery. So up on reflection, I realized that I had some really great friends over the years. And although it, sometimes it was difficult, my involvement in church, my involvement in community was also of great, benef great benefits because it gave me something to care about, to believe in, and I, it was easier to, to get up and put one foot in front of the other until I get there. So now finally, looking back, I am convinced that our wellness journey with or without mental illness is a personal one. We each have to define what our wellness goals are, what process we're gonna go through to learn how to manage and control our, our mood, similar to what I've done with my voices. And me following that process kind of gave me the feeling like, wow, I am the CEO of my life. So I stole that from the corporate work that I would, was doing and now consider myself the CEO for my life. And not only that, but quite the social entrepreneur, impacting other people, helping other people, finding the same love for their life and continue to recover and stay recovered. So that's part of my story. The question is, what's your story? Because only you get to write your story and determine what your story looks like. I thank you again for sharing the space with me. Uh, and I thank you for listening. And I want to say God bless you or may the force be with you. Thank you.